without pure intellect. That question has aroused enough curiosity to bring Anatoly Karpov to IBM on a rainy holiday weekend. The world champion for 10 years, no one has won more chess tournaments than Karpov. And no one like Karpov has ever come to IBM, not to play chess. King f6, king c3. Yeah, it's king e7. King b2. Oh, no. Ah, yeah, g7 should be. G7 should be, yes. G7. And then you don't need to play this. Karpov had been surprised, stunned, by an earlier game he'd played but against Deep Thought, which he was almost forced to draw. King c4. The, the latest line is looking at this king c4. Yeah, no, but, but just, just wait, wait, don't make a mess with right. the variations. Right, yeah. Today isn't a rematch, but a chance to compare his chess thinking with the computer's calculations. The computer is considering every conceivable possibility. But I don't have to pretend that I'm seeing everything in the position. I make no such pretensions. In fact, I discard 99% uh, of all possible variations. But what I'm seeing almost as instantly as, as deep thought is calculating and reassessing thousands of variations is the soul, the heart of the position, and I'm right there. How humans play chess hasn't changed in 500 years. Deep thought is driven by electrical impulses that produce a brute force search. Soviet grandmasters like Lerner and Tal, known as the magician from Riga, respond to more inexplicable urges, instinct, intuition, ingenuity. A computer doesn't know this side of the game or the hero worship it can inspire. There is such a great difference between computer's operation and human. Chess is not only pure calculation. You know, it's, even if computer calculates millions of the position, you still have to evaluate or to not evaluate, but just to uh, understand the position itself. I mean, common sense. I mean, that's our advantage. I want just to be the man who will save our pride, human, human pride. How the machine plays chess is understood, programmable, at least by computer scientists. At the chessboard, it's man who works in mysterious ways. human player, chess is a game of nerves as well as knowledge, of psychological gambits, a test of wills and competitive spirit. None of that will matter to deep thought. My own feeling is that we're going to finally shake the idea that everything has to be done in man's image. We're, we're going to find out that man, as marvelous as he is, evolved to, to meet a set of needs, and that there are all sorts of other needs which man has, has himself created, which machines probably deal with much better than man can do himself, and I think this is going to be an example of that. In a chess game, humans can suffer lapses of concentration or memory and commit blunders. Computers have bugs. A bug had delayed Deep Thought's castling maneuver, costing it time and wasted moves. In pieces, the game was still about even, but the initiative had shifted to Kasparov. 
Deep thought strength is tactical, short range, the ability to analyze a specific position. Its weakness is long range planning, strategy, the very heart of the human game. No one knows this better than Robert Byrne, a grandmaster and regular sparring partner for Deep Thought. In a series of games, Byrne has tested the machine's capabilities, strategy, and tactics. I'm bringing things around to the queen side. I want to attack. I mean, is Deep Thought at this point doing things that a human opponent would not be doing? Um, well, yes, uh, Deep Thought has been having trouble forming a plan. And uh, a human would try something, even if incorrect, would try to become more active. In the beginning, DT can play second-rate strategy, which it did here, misplaced some pieces. But once the pieces are on the squares where DT puts them, it slowly integrates them, given time. So it makes use of the situation in which it finds itself. That's not just in this game. DT does that. Byrne has won and lost against DT. And familiarity has bred respect. The outlook for humans is not too good because the two games that I won from Deep Thought were very beautifully played by me. Now, if that's the only way you see the point. If that's the only way Deep Thought can be beaten is by doing a virtual tour de force, then in the long run, unless you can think of some other way to beat it, it's going to come out ahead because you can't turn these out every day. The first game that I won from Deep Thought contained the best combination I've played in at least 10 years. But Byrne plays on, drawn to the challenge, analyzing even marveling at the computer's game. You see, there's a pin on that rook, but not after this there isn't. You see, the rook is defended now by two pieces. My rook is attacked. So, and I was thinking of doing this because my game is now very bad. I was thinking of, and probably should have, you know, just given up the exchange here. You can't make a mistake. You can't lose your concentration. If you're doing it, it's pretty well, 40 moves, you, you must find the best 41st move. Because it's, that's the, the greatest uh, advantage of the computer, is stability. Computer doesn't lose hope. Computer doesn't care about, I mean, mis previous mistake. No psychological uh, 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 hesitations. The machine will see some cleverness that the human being had not conceptualized. And I see that all the time with high tech and with other computers. They, they, they do things that are very difficult for humans to understand. And for instance, on defense, they will defend like iron. They, they see all the possibilities and they very objectively deal with all of them, try to, try to ward off the most dangerous ones and, and maybe have to accede to the less dangerous ones, whereas a human being usually collapses under that kind of pressure and, and eventually makes a mistake and, and loses. Some people are very upset by this. They don't like the idea of a machine triumphing. But you can look at it another way. It was these geniuses, Feng Shui Shu, Murray Campbell, Thomas Anantharaman. That's a human achievement, what they did. So DT didn't put itself together. Humans did. There are men behind the machine. Here at IBM, the team that created Deep Thought as graduate students have proven that whether or not a computer can think, it can in this field compete. Thought is the first computer to play at grandmaster level, compiling a list of important victims that grows as it gets deeper and deeper into the game. It's very important that they refuse to follow the traditional way to copy our brains, our mind, and they try to use only computers' advantages, calculation, evaluation, etc. 
and uh, that's that's the best way now. But I still I'm not sure that the computer uh, will beat world champion because it's it's a difference to beat players, chess players, strong chess players, strong grandmasters, even contenders, and the world champion. Because world champion is absolutely the best, and his greatest uh, advantage, I mean, his greatest ability is to find a new way in chess. <laughs> and it will be something you can't explain the computer. It's a big issue of psychological interest about what lets a, a Gasparov play the kind of chess and show the kind of performance, given, for instance, he would not like this way of saying it, I'm sure, given that he only can search a little bit. You have to feel chess game. You have to feel uh, the harmony of, of, of chess pieces at the board. It's beyond computer, computer's capabilities, no doubt. And I'm sure it, it won't be available even in, even in the future. The positions have been staked out. In the opening, the two sides had maneuvered for control of the center, for influence over as many squares as possible, for mobility and striking power. Now they are ready to engage their forces to begin the battle of the middle game. Deep thought has been forced into a defensive position, but defense is what the machine plays best. It's Kasparov who will launch the attack. Tradition and culture have bestowed upon the world chess champion an aura of mythic mental powers that will not be easily conceded to a machine. Not by Garry Kasparov. For as long as chess has been played, it's been analyzed. A ritual that draws the chess crowd to a nearby room and fills it to capacity. Idea. I don't know if it works. See, one of the beautiful things about chess is its complexity. Humans have so many different ideas, and there are games and positions still in the fischer spassky match in 72 that haven't been clearly explained, I mean, in any games. Of course, computers are threatening in the long run to take some of that mystery away. Some of the thing that puts the human on the frontier of knowledge. And the machine comes back. We don't have to explain this anymore. We know why it's doing that. It doesn't see anything else to do. It's just waiting. took at d1 the computer is playing on but he's a piece behind and indeed he was the computer it was correct in evaluating some moves ago that its position was worth a piece less did it see all this i don't know 